provide us with many things we value, including clean air and water, beautiful places to visit, and products that drive our economy. For example, the wood we use to build our houses comes from forests. When it rains, forests can help filter and absorb the water that falls, cleaning the water and preventing floods. The water is then released slowly in streams and groundwater. Watersheds on national forests and grasslands alone are the source of 20% of the entire U.S. water supply. At the same time, tree roots can stabilize the soil, helping to prevent erosion during rain or windstorms and keeping sediment out of rivers. Trees within a forest can help cool their surroundings when it's hot, creating microclimates where certain plants and animals can thrive. In towns and cities, they also block wind, helping to lower energy bills. Forests can provide important habitat and food sources for animals, including humans. Trees remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, storing carbon and producing oxygen. This helps maintain a hospitable climate for many of Earth's plants and animals. And of course, forests are great places to spend time exercising, exploring, or relaxing. We've all heard that climate change is due to growing amounts of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, like carbon dioxide and methane. These gases prevent heat from escaping into space, trapping it in our atmosphere, and warming the planet. Without any atmospheric greenhouse gases, the Earth would be extremely cold, so the greenhouse effect is actually a good thing. But the greenhouse gases that humans have been adding to the atmosphere are too much of a good thing. These extra greenhouse gases are causing the average global temperatures to warm, leading to all sorts of other changes. In the U.S., for example, winters are warmer and we're getting more heavy rainstorms, among other climatic changes. So, how is this affecting our forests? The more we know about what changes we are seeing and what we might see, the better we can plan to keep our forests healthy and resilient. Fortunately, we have a lot of scientific research on how climate change is impacting forests and may continue to do so. Let's start with some possible benefits. Climate change may increase forest growth in some areas, at least in the short term. This is partly because a warmer climate can mean a longer growing season. In fact, much of the U.S. is already experiencing a longer growing season. Some trees could use this longer season to produce more biomass. Other creatures could use this longer growing season too, including beneficial insects. Climate change is also leading to increased precipitation in some areas, and forests could benefit from this extra water. Finally, forest growth may increase because of carbon dioxide fertilization, at least in the short term. The higher amounts of carbon dioxide that are causing climate change also make it easier for trees to take in more carbon dioxide through their pores in the leaves, increasing their photosynthesis and water use efficiency. This can lead to faster growth and larger trees when other conditions are also good. So those are some potential benefits related to increased carbon dioxide and climate change in forests. Unfortunately, there are also a number of stresses on forests that are expected to increase as climate changes, and these might limit forest growth in most parts of the world. For forest managers who work to keep forests healthy and able to provide the things we need and enjoy, these stresses can present big challenges. First, we saw how higher levels of carbon dioxide could help increase growth, but trees can also become acclimated to these higher carbon dioxide levels over time. Tree growth over the long run might not increase much or at all if the trees don't have the conditions they require, like adequate soil nutrients. Damage by air pollutants like ozone can also limit any potential benefits. Longer growing seasons could mean more tree growth, 
but only if trees get the right amount of water at the right time. So, if snow melts earlier, as it's doing now in many places, or if there is less rainfall, soil moisture in streams may be lower in late summer, leaving less water available for trees. This water stress affects growth and makes trees more vulnerable to other stressors. An early snowmelt could have other consequences. It can throw off the timing of synchronized life cycles, like pollinators and flowers. Also, snow is a great insulator and can keep tree and plant roots from harm in extreme cold. So, if an early melt is followed by freezing temperatures, tree roots could be damaged, as has been happening to the Alaskan yellow cedar. Root damage can severely injure or kill a tree, and we're all familiar with trees developing leaves or buds, only to have them destroyed in a late spring freeze. More of these situations are expected under climate change. With warmer temperatures, unfortunately those longer growing seasons can be good for pests and diseases too. Some that affect forests have been migrating northwards and to higher elevations where they haven't been seen before and where the trees might not have a strong resistance. Some are now able to overwinter in new areas to produce more generations in a season without cold temperatures to limit them. As the planet warms, more heat and energy in our system also means more extreme weather. This can mean more wind and ice storms, stronger hurricanes, heavier rainstorms, and more frequent heat waves and droughts. And for a forest manager, these can be very difficult to deal with, since they can cause sudden and severe changes, sometimes killing large numbers of trees. Warmer and drier weather can increase the length of the fire season, and more extreme temperatures can make fires more likely to ignite or burn with high severity. We are seeing these fire patterns more clearly with every passing fire season. As temperature and precipitation trends change, the areas where different kinds of trees can grow are also expected to change. Places where species grow now may become less suitable for those same species in the future. This doesn't mean that species will die off overnight, but for the long-term health of the forest, it does mean that forest management will need to consider which species might do well in an area in the future, rather than just what is growing there now. All of these changes to our forests aren't necessarily good or bad. They are just changes. But they do provide us with challenges as we try to maintain the things we value in forests, especially since many of these benefits depend on different parts of the forest ecosystem working together. For the managers responsible for keeping forests healthy, coping with all of these stressors may at first seem like an overwhelming challenge. But it's important to remember that most of these are challenges that managers have had to deal with for a long time. Climate change may increase the severity or alter the patterns of stressors, but we already have tools that forest managers need to help forests respond. When we understand how climate change may affect forests, we can use that information to manage forests so that they are better able to adapt to their new climate and sustain the many things we appreciate and benefit from in our forests. The end. But wait, how do we manage for healthy forests as the climate continues to change? To start, visit the Climate Change Resource Center at the website displayed on your screen. And stay tuned for video number two.